So with that, uh, let's let's uh, do this question again. So or let's do this uh, timed assessment again, knowing that when I start, I will get a new question that I haven't done before. <laughs> so let me start. It's uh, a surprise. It's the Canon mechanics question. <laughs> For the edited video, I started editing from after I've uh, loaded the dice. So. Okay, a cannon fires the cannonball by igniting gunpowder. Yeah, these details are actually not relevant. You know, even thousand atmosphere, not relevant. Pressure pushes the cannonball out, accelerating through the length. Length uh, might be relevant. Let's see the what questions they ask. Firing the, the muzzle velocity, V naught. Okay, V naught, that's actually relevant. Okay, so for each of the questions, keep an organized record of your work, attach it to the end, okay. If the muzzle velocity is uh, that, mass is that, length is that, how much work does the gas do in pushing the cannonball out? Oh, uh, here, I, I think you have to recognize that uh, length is actually um, redundant uh, or superfluous information. You don't need it, it actually doesn't help you do anything. So when it asks uh, how much work, you have to use work kinetic energy theorem, which says that any change of kinetic energy comes from work uh, work done. So when they ask you how much work was done in doing the thing that we saw, we are asking how much was kinetic energy changed. For that, delta K would be one half mass times V naught squared minus the initial um, kinetic energy, which is zero. So really all we have to do is calculate one half MV naught squared. Um, and I think we have all the numbers. Let me just uh, copy this over to the right so that I have access to it as I plug this into my calculator all from alpha. So it should be one half times mass, a uh, one kilogram times V naught, 400 meter per second squared. Uh, 80 kilojoules or 80,000 joules. Okay, that sounds good. Um, uh, 80,000 joules. So that's it. That's uh, how much work the gas does. Um, and I think I've so shown step-by-step -step solution process. There aren't that many steps. And actually, that's one of the things nice about um, energy momentum argument. Usually, the math is pretty easy. Uh, it, that's why it's a nice tool to use in physics problem solving. Whenever you can. That you can always. Assuming the same value, says in A, what is the average force, the force that should be on the cannonball if it's a constant force on the cannonball during the time? Uh, that's interesting. So, um, I will tell you uh, there's two different sense of average. So, um, I'll just say ambiguous average force. Um, so, is it average with respect to time or length? Assume it's uh, average with respect to, to length. And I'm making this assumption because this kind of makes my job easy. This is what I mean. So from definition of work, that work is force uh, dot product with uh, delta x. If we are talking about average force uh, while a force is doing work, you can actually turn it around and say the average force um, with respect to the displacement is the total work done divided by delta x. We calculate the work up there, 80,000 joule. Oh, and this is where I think we know delta x. We know the cannonball must be traveling this length of the cannon, so it'll be that uh, work done divided by that delta x. So I think we are given all the numbers. Um, I have L is, so let me just rewrite this as W divided by L, because L is going to be delta x approximately. Um, there's actually a slight correction that you might make, but it's so small that it doesn't matter here. So this uh, W over L will give you the average force, average over the distance. So let me do 80,000 joule, I already have that, divided by the length of 2.4 meters. Then I think we are going to get something in Newton's back. 
that we can call as the average force. It's going to be 33,300 newtons. Um, F average is equal to 30, did I forget already? <laughs> 33,300 newtons. Okay, 33,300 newtons. So that's it, I think. Uh, what is the average force? Yeah, that's the average force. Okay. Uh, if the cannon's own mass is that, what is the recoil speed? Oh, yeah, so we gotta figure that out. Um, so this is uh, the kind of the mental image you should have. You have the cannon that's uh, sitting on some kind of wheel, so it's uh, free to move, and you have a cannonball inside. Now, uh, you can see from this picture that at the beginning, the total momentum here is equal to zero. Now we are going to consider the snapshot of this thing where the cannon is here and the cannonball has been pushed out and just outside the cannon it's moving at the speed that were we given or calculating that we were uh, given. Uh, we are given the V-naught. That's the muzzle velocity. Now this is what you have to realize that if you imagine, oh, by the way, this is for C. So if you, if you imagine the forces between the cannonball and the cannon and draw the free body diagrams for both of them, the free body diagrams for the cannonball, it'll be getting pushed to the right by the gas and the free body diagram of the cannon It will be being pushed to the left. This is, you can actually think of this as action reaction force. I guess technically it's the gas pushing on the ball and the gas pushing on the uh, the cannon. But uh, the gas is kind of acting as a medium. Really, what it is, cannon exerting a force on the ball, ball exerting a reaction force back. So it's asking for what is the recoil speed of the cannon. Ah, so with this setup in mind, what you should have. Um, uh, realizes so you have net momentum of zero to start which means out here this must be moving backward at enough speed let me call it for you one so that the net momentum is again zero because in this setup I hope you get the sense that uh, momentum is conserved because it's a kind of collision limited duration and while that interaction is happening net external force is zero. So we have that. Now, if you're trying to look for uh, energy being conserved, here, I guess uh, with that, um, I think your biggest hint is this. In order to get this cannon to fire, um, you have to uh, ignite and cause the rapid combustion of the gunpowder. So um, that will be adding energy, so that um, the, 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 it's hard to conserve energy there. <laughs> so um, I think I made the argument that uh, momentum is conserved. And if you are thinking that energy might be conserved, I think you can kind of guess from the fact that there's a rapid combustion of gunpowder that's probably adding energy to the system that energy is probably not going to be conserved. But I think a, a moment of conservation is enough to solve this uh, out. So let's uh, just uh, write this out and see. So with the moment of conservation, what we are saying is the net momentum at, uh, let me call these snapshots A and B. So in snapshot A, your net momentum is zero there. And that should also be the case in the snapshot B, which will have an expression like, uh, so let's say the right word is positive. So we'll have positive mv naught, and then we'll have minus mass of the cannon times its speed, whatever it is, v1. So I think that's one equation, one unknown. So solving for v1, I get the um, ratio of masses, small m over big m times v naught. Um, and do I have v naught? I think we are given the v naught. That's the muzzle velocity. Uh, yeah, 400 meters per second. So let's do the calculation. So it's going to be 5,600 5, kilograms for the denominator. For the numerator, what is it? Um, for the numerator, uh, small mass m, that's oh, um, one kilogram, 
one kilogram divided by I forgot the number already. <laughs> uh, uh, 5600, 5600 a kilogram. Um, Uh, yeah, kilogram bit ratio of the masses. I'm looking at my initial velocity, which is 400, uh, 400 meters per second. So how much work? Uh, we are not asking about work right now. Uh, in C, we are asking for what is the recoil speed? Yeah. Yeah. Assume they roll through the negligible friction. So the recoil speed, that so sounds so small, but that's probably right. 0 0.0714 seconds. Um, so we can say this is equal to uh, 0 0.0714 meters per second. Yeah, really small speed. Um, e even if, even though we are assuming that the um, the cannon is locked down or anything, so uh, we recoil is equal to. Uh, 0 0.0714 meter per second. Okay, in the firing process, which part does the expanding gas do more work? Um, you got eight minutes. Oh, that's plenty of time. Uh, cannonball, cannon, or both. Oh, yeah. So, you know, this is, I think, uh, the kind of question where it's tempting for people to say both, you know, aren't they like equal and opposite, all that stuff? Um, so, let me do it slightly different way. I'm going to calculate the kinetic energy. The same way I did it before up here, calculate the change in kinetic energy and attribute that change in kinetic energy to work done, which will tie into internal energy. All right, so instead of saying both, uh, let me just erase that. And I'm looking at, all right, uh, what is the change in the kinetic energy of the ball? And that's going to be equal to work done on ball. And I'm also going to look at changing kinetic energy of the cannon. And you know, that will also be work done on cannon. So we can kind of see. Uh, let's work out the changing kinetic energy of the ball. Did I already work it out before? Um, maybe I haven't. Um, so the initial kinetic energy is zero. So I just need a final. So it's going to be... Um, one half mass of the ball. I think we are given that we can plug that in times um, our um, uh, time, time, times our uh, the the the, in, the the module velocity squared. So that'll be v not squared. Uh, let's work this out and see. So I think I have all the parameters on the right hand side. So we are looking at one half times. Uh, 400 meters per second times uh, Vina squared, which was, wait, that, that is Vina squared. So I need the mass. Uh, mass of, uh, yeah, one kilogram. I keep forgetting that. All right, so with those numbers, for the amount of work that I do that, 80,000 joules. Did I already work this out? Why do I feel like I've already worked this out? Oh, yeah, I did. Sorry, I could have just looked that up. So, um, so, um, that's actually of four cannonball, and you can do the exact same calculation with the cannon itself. It's the same formula, uh, so you know, work done on cannon, which is equal to one half times mass of the cannon times v naught squared. Simple formula. So, uh, and the initial kinetic energy is again zero. And uh, I'm looking at how valid is it. And and the way to do it is to plug in the numbers. I think I have everything. Oh, but, oh let me not say V not. I think I uh, used the label V recoil. That would be correct because I'm looking for uh, using the speed of the cannon. So, okay, I think I have everything I need. Um, so the, yeah, so the mass of the cannon is that. Um, let's see. So it's going to be, oh, let me just copy and paste this. Mm. 
and I can put in okay one half times the mass um, 5600 kilogram times V recoil 0 0.0714 squared uh, meter per second and not just squaring the second square the whole thing squared okay um, I get 14.27 joules I believe that's a minuscule compared to what it was. So let me type in 14.27 joules uh, for Canon. Uh, kinetic energy is equal to one half times mass times of a uh, recoil squared. Uh, Let's see, yeah, the, and the initial energy is zero. So that's equal to, do I need to plug in the numbers? I think I, yeah. So you can actually, once you calculate the energy uh, values, you can see quite clearly that, oh yeah, the, the lighter mass can carry away more energy in that particular situation than the, sorry, not li lighter mass, the, yeah, lighter mass. Um, lighter mass can carry away the energy uh, more efficiently than the heavier mass. Uh, it comes down to when there's a, like interaction, explosion, the main constraint there is the momentum conservation. And once you've imposed that the velocity of objects work out such that, that um, the, the larger the object, the lower speed it was, so, um, so it doesn't carry away a lot of um, energy. Even though, you know, the mass term here, one might think that should uh, make sure it carries away a lot of energy. But when you apply the moment of conservation, this happens to increase with the decreasing mass. So, so I think uh, uh, so. I will say the on the canon ball, the uh, expanding gas, expanding gas does more work because there's more displacement. All right, I think that's everything. Uh, let me paste in my work, which is there on a lot. I think for this question, I was able to use the textbook. Um, so with that, let's just copy and paste this in. Um, all right, so that's gonna be C and, you know. And I think uh, uh, I typed in, in A, so I wasn't missing A and B. So, all right, let me copy in D. And you know, any work that you are, any reasoning that you are able to type out here, it doesn't necessarily need to be drawn. I do recommend that you redraw free body diagram and stuff to um, get a good number sense, but otherwise, um, yeah. All right, so that all looks good. Let me submit it. Or did my time run out? No. Let me submit it and, and let's check the answers. So I'm gonna go to the free from time assessment. Uh, what am I looking for? Um, sorry. This is what happens when you feel sleepy. Uh, my train of thought just gets interrupted. All right, I think I need a great view. You square list. The test stunt is the only one who's done this stuff. All right, so let's bring this back. So, okay, for each other question. Yeah, I think a joule is right. Same values as that. Um, what is the average force that should be on the cannonball? Um, that looks kind of right. And, oh, yeah, I got the numbers right. Yeah, good, good, good. Um, so recoil velocity is, did I do everything right? Must be. <laughs> um, and let's see uh, if the dual order is not so quick as I'm looking at the kinetic energy. Um, yeah, I think this is the explanation of the issue. But in terms of the answers, 80,000 joules, 14.3 joules. So great. I think we got everything. So, so yeah, that's the second question. I don't know what save changes will do. Um, 
So, so that's the second question, and I think I got all of them right within the time limit, more or less. Uh, and I think that is our time because. Um,